hey Brad, I really loved hanging out with you a couple times. Didn't feel the connection necessary to take things to the next level. No hard feelings, best of luck in the future. 20 second conversation, instead of dissembling and lying and texting and playing games and all to spare someone else's feelings. Again, you think you're being kind, but it's kind of actually cruel to string someone along. Hey, I'm Evan Mark Katz, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women, and your personal trainer for love. Welcome back to the Love You podcast. This week, our topic is do women lie more than men? And now that I have your attention, stick around till the very end to discover how to apply to love you to create a relationship that makes you feel safe, heard, and understood. Um, and before we get into the meat of today's podcast, I do want to tell you about a couple of upcoming events. Uh, upcoming quite quickly, in fact, first is a very special Ask Me Anything with uh, Live Hot Seat Coaching. Uh, ask me anything means you could literally ask me anything uh, about dating relationships, myself, my take on the world. But I, my guess is that you're mostly going to have dating and relationship questions. This ask me anything with live hot seat coaching um, is for readers, listeners, followers. It takes place on Thursday, August 3rd. Uh, so coming up really, really soon uh, this week. Uh, and then just want to make sure that you're prepared for what happens on that call. On that call, you'll submit a question. We'll be live on Zoom, submit it in the QA box. I will screen through all the questions and try to answer as many as possible to access this, to be reminded of this. All you have to do is go to evanmarkkatz.com forward slash live stream. That's this week's live stream. And I will do my best to answer it during that call. I do love live coaching. It's my favorite thing to do. I know you think I just love podcasting, but really I like talking to people face-to-face uh, -face and hearing your questions and giving you resolutions. So please join me on evanmarkatz.com forward slash live stream. And the second thing I want to remind you about is Believe in Love Boot Camp, which is coming up uh, a couple of days afterwards, uh, Saturday, August 5th. Uh, we are almost at capacity. We don't want um, a big crowd because we want everybody to get personal attention. So if you are watching or listening and you're tired of dating men who fail to love you the way you deserve, if you're afraid of being vulnerable since every man you've ever met has eventually disappointed, hurt, or abandoned you, if you find yourself teetering on the verge of giving up on men entirely, you're taking very long breaks from dating, uh, instead of persevering and continuing to engage in your dating practice, going out with one new guy a week, as I recommend, if that is not working for you or you feel stuck, join me to break through your fear and your anxiety and your limiting beliefs. And I'll give you a step-by-step -step process. It's seven steps to letting go of the past, embracing the present, and dating with confidence. This is what takes place in Believe in Love Boot Camp. Um, it's a one-day intensive training, Saturday, August 5th, designed to get you unstuck on the road to lasting love and quick, quickly jumpstart your love life. And... Again, this is an opportunity to take action. Most people is, who listen to podcasts uh, enjoy it for entertainment value. Um, the way your life changes is when you take action. So go to evanmarquettes.com forward slash bootcamp and register for the event before it sells out because class begins on Saturday, August 5th. Now, to take the leap, our Love You Insight for today is do women lie more than men? Perhaps... Uh, just differently than men. So that's where I'm going to land on this. I would certainly not bite the hand that feeds me, um, but I do want to talk about a commonly perceived difference between men and women and how we communicate. Uh, and most of what I share is not my observations. These are, I'm, I'm citing what other people who have uh, put a lot more thought into this have observed. So I'm going to begin with someone named Deborah Tannen, She's written some amazing books. Uh, the one that I'm going to cite today is You Just Don't Understand Men and Women in Conversation. When I was in college, uh, this was a, a pretty big deal. And I remember taking a linguistics course uh, when I was at Duke University in the, in the 90s. And I remember the professor citing Deborah Tannen, who was a you know, feminist uh, linguist, 
who talked about the difference between men and women. And she, and the professor used this one example because we were in North Carolina on a really hot August day, first week of classes. And the professor gave a, an example of, okay, so imagine a hot August day in North Carolina and we're in a classroom and it's sweltering outside. And this is not a room with air conditioning because these buildings are not equipped with air conditioning. Now imagine a prototypical woman and a prototypical man. Again, we always deal with stereotypes here for a reason. There's always exceptions to stereotypes, but this is from Tannen's research. All right. Man starts to sweat, raises his hand, says to the professor, hey, could you open the window, please? Okay. And professor opens the window because it's a reasonable request. Woman, on the other hand, in this stereotypical situation, because she has been perhaps socialized to not make waves, to not be heard, to not uh, create conflict, um, doesn't raise her hand to say, can you open the window, professor? She turns to her girlfriend and says, do you think it's hot in here? She's looking for consensus. Do you think it's hot in here? If her friend agrees, then perhaps they will take action. Now, if the friend doesn't agree, and the friend's like, no, nah, I'm fine, she may sit there and sweat and boil and burn and look around the room and get pissed that nobody has bothered to open the window, even though she never actually requested that anybody open the window. That is the big difference that I'm going to key on in observing men and women today. So, sorry, I got multiple pages for today. So my observation is that women lie to protect feelings because women are more sensitive to nuance and feeling and emotion, right? The, the, the stereotype, once again, is a um, woman will go to a 20th high school reunion and look at her friend who's gained a lot of weight and say, oh my God, Janine, you look wonderful. Oh my God, you look wonderful. She'll say to her friends afterwards, but oh my God, you look wonderful. And that's polite. Where a guy goes to his 20th high school reunion and he gained a lot of weight and someone's like, hey, Dan, it looks like you ate a basketball. That's how men talk to each other. Very direct, very honest, actually. Which is not to say that men never lie, but men might be honest in a different sort of way. When a guy says, yeah, I'm not looking for anything serious right now. I've gotten women asking me the question, what does he mean by that? As if there's a hidden meaning that he didn't convey because she has a hidden meaning that she didn't convey, right? When a man says, I don't want to talk about it, it means I don't want to talk about it. Right. Prototypically, when a woman says, I don't want to talk about it, it means ask me six or seven more times to show me how much you care about me because obviously I'm in pain and I want to talk about it, but I want you to pull it out of me because to show that you care about me. All right. So men speak ten generally more directly and women speak generally more indirectly with hidden meanings. All right. And again, again I know this could come off as sexist. I'm not trying to be that, accuse me of whatever you want. If anything, I'm trying to observe what we all sort of observe in the world and why men and women often talk past each other. This happened in my marriage recently when I found it sort of baffling. My wife, I don't know, I don't get into the details of the story, but we have some friends. Uh, our, our kids were friends at a young age and my son has outgrown his little friend to the point where he doesn't want to hang around her anymore, doesn't enjoy her company, which is he's entitled to do. They were friends when they were seven. Now he's 10, almost 11, and you can't make anybody become friends with each other, but because the parents are friends, the other parents are trying to get our kids to hang out together. Oh, well, let's get together as families. And my son's like, no, I really don't want to do that. So I know if I was in charge, again, maybe, maybe foolishly, if I was in charge, I would say, Hey, you know, my kid is not, you know, in the same place that he was, he's, you know, he's not as keen on 
uh, one-on-one time with your kid. And it's obviously nothing personal. We have nothing against your daughter, but you can't make kids be friends. We feel really close to you. We'd love to still be friends, but we'll just do it without the, the kids. Uh, it may sting to hear, but it's the truth. It puts it on the table and it's more effective. To me, to be honest, my wife will not have this conversation. We get invited over. Oh, no, no, no. My, my son's, my son's busy. Um, no, he's, he's got a, he's got a thing. So we're just lying all the time to this other couple for no real reason. We're just lying to protect their feelings instead of being honest and moving past it. And as a guy who gives dating a relationship advice and having a relationship with my wife for now 15 married years, 17 years total, I don't find that to be a very effective way to communicate is to bury your feelings and hope that someone gets the hint or, right, it's like, it's the equivalent of ghosting. If a guy doesn't text you back, well, I guess she's going to take the hint that that I never want to see her again. And you're sitting there staring at your phone and wondering what's going on and texting him. When am I going to see you again? And when the easier thing to be to tell the truth? I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. But I'm a big fan of direct communication and honesty and radical acceptance and all those kind of things. And I do think, strangely, this is one thing, probably because it seems insensitive, that men do better than women. I think women do most communication, uh, emotional things better than men. I think they're more intuitive and more sensitive, and this is largely a good thing. I think this is a way where the... I've got clients who like refuse to break up with clients. That's probably the last story I want to share. I got a client who's been seeing a guy and she's gone out with him two or three times and she's not feeling it. And she's like, Evan, what should I do? And I was like, tell him you're not feeling it. But I don't want to hurt him. Hurt him? He's a, in this case, he's a 70 year old man. You don't think he's going to be able to survive the fact that a woman he's gone out with twice doesn't want to see him again? Do you really think he's that fragile? And if he is that fragile, is that really your responsibility or problem? But, you know, maybe we, I could just tell him we want to be friends. Do you want to be friends with him? Not really. So why would you tell him you want to be friends? So there's this so much lying to protect people's feelings. But the reason I'm calling this out is not, oh, men are better than women because when men tell the truth. This is when it comes at a cost to you. It comes at a cost to my wife to lie to her friend about the kids. It comes at a cost to you when you don't have the courage to say, hey, Brad, I really loved hanging out with you a couple of times. Didn't feel the connection necessary to take things to the next level. No hard feelings. Best of luck in the future. 20 second conversation. All right. Instead of dissembling and lying and texting and playing games and all to spare someone else's feelings. You think you're being kind, but it's kind of actually cruel to string someone along. Right. For my wife to string along this person who is trying to make plans with my son right, for months and not tell her the truth, I don't know, man. I, I, it's, it's unheard of for me to, to lie like that, uh, and it's probably why I'm a little bit of a bull in a china shop. Uh, I think you can tell the truth with sensitivity, and it's far more effective than lying. So if anything I said has resonated with you, if you have been lying to yourself, if you've been lying to men, usually lying to yourself, this relationship is fine, right? Even though you don't feel safe, heard, and understood. No, everything's okay. He's just busy right now. If you've gotten caught up in believing your own lies and the excuses you make for why you put up with men or why you're not dating online, right? Or why you've settled in the past, if you have gotten caught up in believing your own lies, maybe you should reach out because my job is just to hold up the mirror to you, same as we're doing right now, and lead you through that process so you can be more productive. You can look forward instead of back. You could stay, get unstuck instead of being stuck in these patterns of dating online, uh, the, 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 this broad spectrum of douchebags that you're attracted to who don't make you feel very good or boring guys who you keep around because you're too nice to move on. There is a narrow lane of men who have 
husband written all over him. If you are not meeting that guy right now, I do want to help you. EvanMarkKatz.com forward slash apply. Now for um, my love you small win for the week. Remember, love you small wins are clients who are in my love you live course every week, every Tuesday night. We begin with love you small wins and we got a dozen people tell me the good things that are going on in their love life. If that sounds foreign to you, you might want to be in love you. This week's small win. An ex reached out to me, but I stood my ground and didn't engage with him. It was a bit of a battle, but I knew I deserved better and I'm grateful for the support of the group. Old version of her would have taken the bait, gone out to lunch with him, right? Listen to him give the pitch about how he missed her and who knows what could happen and maybe we should start hanging out again or, you know, that's what happens with exes. Always come back to recycle because they haven't done better. They haven't moved on. So you're the high watermark in their life. Right. Love you. We teach you. If you tried to date a guy and it didn't work, it's not going to work and he's not a good fit for your life and you need to move forward and not look back takes a lot of courage and support to do so. And so that's what we're here for. Um, this week's thematic recommended read of the week comes courtesy of the Washington Post. Um, uh, looks like the title Sex, Lies, and Conversation. I, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the link, the URL, as opposed to quoting the article. Don't know who wrote it. I just know, know I wrote down some things that I thought were relevant to this dynamic that we create here on the Love You podcast. So in no particular order, here's some bullet points, some aha moments that I took away from uh, this article. Bonds between boys can be intense as girls, but they are based less on talking, more on doing things together. Since boys don't assume that talk is the cement that binds a relationship, men don't know what kind of talk women want and they don't miss it when it isn't there. So if you ever wonder, why does my boyfriend not convey his feelings the same way I convey my feelings, where we sit down and we look at each other in the eye, and I just share our feelings. The stereotype is boys do side by side, right? They'll play video games, and in the process of playing video games and staring at the screen, they will bond and share and maybe even get into feelings, but it's not a feelings conversation. Right, so it's side by side facing something else, where it's and, and where women it's more likely to be face to face. This is a observed sociological difference between boys and girls for God knows what reason. So the fact that boys connect and communicate that way, and girls stereotypically communicate in another way, means that there's going to be a gap between, in general, what men want and what women want, and we have to kind of figure out how to bridge that gap. If I'm coaching women. I need to acknowledge that men are men are different, and if you want to connect with him, maybe there's another way to do so instead of, Jeff, we need to talk about us, which is going to be the last thing that he's going to respond to, which doesn't mean you have to sit and play video games with him to uh, have a conversation. Again, I believe there's probably more of a middle ground. Next bullet point from the article. Boys groups are larger more inclusive and more more hierarchical so boys must struggle to avoid the subordinate position in the group this may play a role in women's complaints that men don't listen some men really don't like to listen because being the listener makes them feel one down like a child listening to adults or an employee to a boss that was something i never thought of before which is why i brought it up here i think and i couldn't say whether it's true, factually true, or just an opinion or an observation, but it makes sense to me. I mentioned boys put each other down. Dan, you look like you ate a basketball, right? You don't want to be at the bottom of that pile. Women can make, be catty, talk behind each other's backs, but they're talking behind each other's backs. Boys talk to each other's face. Boys really bully each other in a different way. And it's also the, the language of friendship. Guys, best friends bust on each other and they play on each other's weaknesses. And I mean, it's just a different dynamic, the teasing dynamic. But if you're at the bottom of the male social totem pole to some degree, that's a lot to bear. And again, I'm not saying it's any different to bear as a woman. It's just a different dynamic. 
And so I think that there's a thing with men, and it's not my idea, it's just a, a quote that I cited before, uh, masculine energy men don't like to be directed or corrected, right? That doesn't mean he's right in every situation, but if you've ever noticed that your guy doesn't like being told what to do, he won't stop and ask for directions on the side of the road. He, right? Men don't do too well with that. There's a certain stubbornness and arrogance to the point of foolhardiness often with men. But it's not very effective to talk to guys like that, which is why I, I teach a book called Kiss Your Fights Goodbye by Dr. Jamie Turndorf in month five of Love You. I've gotten permission to teach it because I think it's such a powerful communication tool for women. Right? How do you talk to your guy in a way that he listens to you and wants to honor your requests without attacking him and making him wrong, which is usually what happens when you talk to your guy as you attack him or you make him wrong, usually unintentionally, but that's the byproduct. So there's a, unfortunately, a skill set to bridge the gap between men and women. It doesn't just happen itself. Bullet point. Whereas women reassure each other by implying, you shouldn't feel bad because I've had similar experiences. Men do so by implying, you shouldn't feel bad because your problems aren't so bad. Um, it's a less empathetic point of view. And again, I think this is where women have it over men, uh, myself included. My daughter said this. It was actually pretty profound. Made me feel a little bit bad, but it was true. She was talking about the differences between her mom and her dad. And she talks about dad and his, his confidence and how he you know, seems to know everything and try everything. And I, I'm not like I was trying to brainwash, brainwash my daughter into that, but like, that persona of, I can do anything, I can learn anything, I can adapt, I'm going to try the hardest, and I could inspire my daughter to a level of greatness if she wants that, where my wife is the one that my daughter turns to when she has problems. Even though dad is a dating coach, which is kind of like an amateur psychologist, my daughter's more likely to turn to my wife because she's empathetic first, right? She listens closer. She doesn't just try to fix Guys are big on trying to fix. Ah, you know, you skinned your knee, pick yourself up, you got this. I, you know, I once, you know, my my brains once fell out when I was playing football when I was 12 and I survived and very guy way of handling things. And so I think that's one way that women and men also talk past each other is men are more likely to try to fix rather than listen. They seem less empathetic when they're really trying to solve problems, right? But that's not always what people want to hear. I'm running through a lot of things. This is a pretty major article, but I hope that the things that I'm pulling from this give you pause for thought where it's not men better, or women better. It's men and women are different. We each have strengths or weaknesses, whether they're biological or sociological. And it's important that we acknowledge these things because in relationships, we're always talking about the Venn diagram. Where do you and your partner overlap? And how do we bridge the gaps between how you think and how he thinks and what you want and what he wants? If you can't do that, if you can't find a big overlap, you're not going to have a successful relationship. Next bullet. When most women talk to each other, they assume a conversationalist job is to express agreement and support. But many men see their conversational duty as pointing out the other side of an argument. This is heard as disloyalty by women and refusal to offer the requisite support. It's not that women don't want to see other points of view, but that they prefer them phrased as suggestions and inquiries rather than direct challenges. Oh my God, guilty as charged. I mean, I've been, I spent 20 years getting yelled at on the internet for giving basically the shortest version of an answer instead of the longest, most discursive, most sympathetic version of the answer. So a woman will, would write me a thousand word question about her shitty, lying, cheating, you know, critical boyfriend and how much she loves him and how much he loves her and times that they feel so connected and how he promised he'd be there for her forever, but he's done this and this and this and this and the guy's literally the world's worst guy. And my answer is dump him. And really, that is the answer. But to be better on my part, I would have been better served to write a thousand word 
answer that matched the length of her question. Oh my God, honey, I know what it's like to be in your situation. That sounds so devastating to put your trust in someone, to know that they love you, that despite their promises, they're not living up to their word and to be torn about not knowing what to do since you already put two years into this relationship. And again, I know I'm doing it now and I know how it sounds. It's really what someone would want to hear. It just takes a lot longer when the answer is dump him. And so I think that this, that's also sort of a, a, a basic difference between men and women in terms of communication. So it's, it's been said before, women communicate to connect. Men communicate to convey information. So you might be telling a story and it's the 10 minute version of a three minute story. And he's like, um, you know, what's, what's the point? Where is this going? And you're like trying to lay the groundwork of the story. That's certainly the dynamic between my wife and I, where there's a lot of detail that I'm not even sure pays off for what the story is about. And so this is a thing where we're just sort of constantly at cross purposes. Uh, and I don't think it, that anybody's right or anybody's wrong. It's really just n mitigating, minimizing what happens when you don't see the world through the same lens as your partner or through the opposite sex overall. I will say on behalf of men, it is not disloyal when he pre presents the other side of an argument. It may be tactless, it may not feel good, but anybody who doesn't see the other side of an argument is going to be an unfair interlocutor. You cannot have a reasonable discussion with someone who only sees their point of view, truly. Um, I'm not saying that my gender couldn't be more patient, empathetic, validating, et cetera, but really certainly as a coach, uh, I, g I give plenty of empathy when I'm on my coaching calls with clients. Uh, and then sometimes I just sort of cut to the chase and it stings and it doesn't feel good. And I have to take ownership for it. I hope it's understood that if I'm doing that and I'm your coach or if your partner or husband's doing that. Right. It's coming from a place of love. I remember my wife complaining about her boss at the time, working at the same company for 16 years, and I feel stuck, and my boss interrupts me during the day, and I'm not being properly compensated, and I wish I wish I had more freedom. And and I and I was listening to her to complain about the situation. Now she liked her job, and she liked the people she worked with, and she, right, she just complain. It's normal to complain about your job. And I was like, why don't you just Start your own company. You've been there for 16 years. You know everything. Why don't you become the boss? Like, why don't you start your own thing? You know everything your boss knows after all these years. Why don't you do that? I don't want to be the boss. And I said, well, and you can complain about your job. And I was like, like, fine. If you don't want to be the boss, why don't you have a conversation about your boss, about setting healthy boundaries or about your hopes and dreams and your your aspirations for the company, about how you, you can be more productive at work for her if she doesn't text you during the middle of the day and she can save all of her questions for you at the end of the day. Maybe just tell her how she can get more out of you out of, uh, as an employee. All right, there I am trying to solve problems. All she wanted to do is complain about her boss. She did not want any solutions. And this is just so typical, right? Where the guy comes off as the insensitive mansplainer and all he's trying to do is try to figure out how, how you could solve the problem that has been roiling you for months and years. And so again, once it's not that that guys have it all right in this situation it's that we're just talking pa past each other and men don't fully understand how much women want to be heard it's why one of the core tenets of love you is a man who makes you feel safe heard and understood i, I do understand the importance of it just not always good at doing it um last piece at home where a man has nothing to prove and no one to defend against, he is free to remain silent. For his wife, being home means she's free from the worry that something she says might offend someone or spark disagreement or appear to be showing off. At home, she's free to talk. So it might explain a dynamic at home where the guy at the end of the day is just wants to kind of shut down and not have any meaningful conversation, right? He can just take a load off and relax a woman who might have all these feelings that all her co-workers and the bullshit she's putting up with wants to come home and vent and she shares her true feelings at 
home, he might be less likely to do so. So again, these are all observations from Washington Post article that I keyed on that I thought had some measure of resonance. I'm not going to vouch for them. It's not that I 100% that believe that they're true in all situations. I apologize for equivocating, but when you have when you're a male dating coach talking to women, you want to be very very clear about this. I'm not really here to take sides in gender wars. If anything, I'm trying to help men and women develop healthier relationships by under, understanding each other a little bit better. And the best way to do so is to, to speak honestly about what's going on in the world. Uh, that's why I cite Deborah Tannen, who did a ton of research on this. I think she's she's really good. Um, I wish I could, I'm off, off the top of my head, cite, you know, I think I've read one or two of her other books as well. But if you haven't read a Deborah Tannen book, T-A-N-N-E-N, um, you do want to do so. So thanks for dealing with my little my little uh, rant there. Uh, I want to, as always, close with a love you love story because these are the best. This is the reason that you're here is not just for uh, provocative hot takes, but I get some hope and optimism that all this stuff that we're talking about on the Love You podcast can be yours. I have very few people listen to me just for marriage maintenance. Usually people are listening because you're single and struggling and trying to figure stuff out. So here's the results of coaching. Evan, I've been a subscriber for many years. I signed up when I was living and working in Las Vegas. So while Vegas has many visitors each year, the dating scene was tricky because there's only about 600,000 people who actually reside there and many work in the entertainment industry. As a professional woman, it was hard to meet other professionals for friendship and dating that had similar interests, work hours, etc. Your practical advice was and continues to be very helpful. Even though I'm older than you, I think of you as the parent who gives tough love. You give advice that needs to be heard, but it's not usually what a person really wants to hear. Nevertheless, you've been right about many things. For example, I'm now living in Jacksonville, and I'm currently dating a man who is perfect for me. In the past, I would have swiped left because he is older, he's bald, and he has a dad bod. However, despite all the superficial qualities that I used to base my selections on, I gave him a chance. I'm so glad I did because he's intelligent, kind, considerate, responsible, ethical, and just a wonderful person in general. He's also handsome and Jewish, and we are so compatible that the first year of our relationship has been easy, fun, and exciting. Your advice helped me find my significant other, so thank you so much for what you do. Considerate, responsible, ethical, wonderful, intelligent, kind. The last man you dated all of those things? If he's not, and you're having trouble finding a guy who is intelligent, kind, considerate, responsible, ethical, and just a wonderful person in general... I would encourage you to listen to what I have to share next. Just a quick reminder about my two upcoming events from the Love Universe, this thing that I try to create, love in the world. First is a very special Ask Me Anything live hot seat coaching. Hot seat is you and me, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, answering live Q&A for readers, followers, uh, listeners. Thursday, August 3rd, think of your most pressing dating and relationship question, the one that's burning in your head, go to evanmarkatz.com forward slash live stream to register, put in your name, email address, and phone number, and I will do my best to answer your question on our live Zoom call. I do love live coaching. Uh, that's where I think I'm at my best, I hope. And uh, I really much, I very much look forward to seeing you there. It's absolutely free. So check it out. And the second event, of course, is my Believe in Love Bootcamp. This is an event, never done it before, but it's going to be pretty epic. If you're sick of dating the wrong men, if you're burnt out on swiping and texting and hooking up, if you find yourself tired of being in relationships with men who don't treat you the way you deserve, and you don't know if you could persevere for much longer, Believe in Love Bootcamp is a one-day intensive training on Saturday, August 5th that will get you unstuck and make love inevitable. Yes, I said it, inevitable. Go to evanmarkatz.com forward slash bootcamp and register before it sells out. It's coming up fast. Uh, my name is Evan Mark Katz. I am your dating coach. I am proud to be here. I'm proud to serve you. Thank you for tuning into the Love You podcast. If you enjoyed today's content and you're watching on YouTube, please click on the button to subscribe and ring the bell if you want to see new content as it comes out. If you're on a podcast player, do me a favor. Give me a review. I'm not even going to tell you how many stars. However many stars feels good to you. 
um, but write something up. Don't just click on the star. Uh, tell me how you feel. Tell me what you learn. Tell me what you like. Uh, it really means a lot. The algorithm appreciates it and shows the podcast to more people. And if you were like, man, this really resonates with me. I want a guy who tells me the truth so I could actually get the love that I deserve. Go to evanmarkkatz.com forward slash apply. Watch my short video on how to fix your broken man picker and see inside your blind spots. Fill out a short application. We'll talk on the phone and I will hold your hand to the altar. To, right? That's how much personal attention you get in love you. My job is to ensure that you break the patterns of your past and actually get the relationship that you've been craving for your entire life. So don't miss out. EvanMarkHats.com forward slash apply. I know that's a lot of links. Do what feels good to you. As long as you're on my mailing list, I can be in touch with you and give you free dating and relationship advice outside of this podcast. And that's the way I could have the greatest possible impact on your life. So I love you. I appreciate you. I thank you for listening. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care.